I'll just send you the file and edit it as you see fit. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hello and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And today, I am super excited to have Dom Fawcett with us. Did I say that right? You did. Dom Fawcett, you got it. Dom Fawcett. So let's do that again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Sorry, fair I enough. get it right. Fair enough. Dom Fawcett. And you don't go by Dominic, it's just Dom, it's Dom right? Yeah. Okay. My mother called me Dom. All right, awesome. Hello and welcome to Take Back Time. My name is Penny Zanker and I'm your host. And today we have an exciting guest with us. Dom Fawcett is an amazing speaker. And really, you know, I've been impressed with the level of vulnerability and, and how, you know, he shares his story so freely so that people can connect with, at least this is what I found, with, with really the, um, the challenges that they're having in their life and how they can, uh, you know, how they can take that shift. And so today we, we kind of wanted to talk about um, next steps because sometimes those next steps are really hard. Maybe we're in a place where we're stuck. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're in a place where we want to get to somewhere incredibly big, but it's overwhelming. And so that's our theme for today, next steps. So Dom, tell our audience who you are and what, uh, what's special about Dom Fawcett. Dom Fawcett. My, again, my name is Dom Fawcett. I am a, a, a speaker, but before any titles, which to me aren't that important, I'm, I'm a person. I am a person that, that is a son, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I'm a brother, right? And, and with those titles, suggest that there's people that depend on you, right? Yeah. Maybe not financially, but maybe emotionally, or maybe just a good laugh, right? Or leadership. And well, there's expectations with there those are ex roles, ex right? There expectations from with ourselves those roles. and from other people. Totally, totally are. Totally are. And you bring up a valid point with ourselves first. Yeah. Um, but you, you, you brought up just the, the next step, taking the next step. And I know in my life personally, I've, I've missed the boat on taking the next step. And I think many people have, but. So, what do you mean by that? You've missed the boat on taking the next step. I overthought it. I had an opportunity to take the next, and if I would have just taken that step, or we, I might call it a leap of faith. Oh, right. And, and so kept, you didn't take the step didn't because, take it because of fear it. or, or yeah, fear. whatever. Oh, totally fear. Right. Totally fear. fear. And one of the things that, I, okay, we're not going to be, okay. That's okay. All right. All right, fair enough. Oops. <laughs> this is live, right? Uh, this, 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 yes, 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 it is. All right. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of next steps. But anyways, I digress. But I'm fine. <laughs> right? Exactly. Uh, I am a veteran. I, I was an Air Force K-9. And once I got out of the military, I became a cop. And I just wanted to make a difference in, in, in people's lives. Which, what happens in law enforcement on TV isn't always what happens in, in, in real life. And I got to a point in my law enforcement career where I just, I was fed up. I was done, I, I couldn't feel. I was angry, I was hateful, I was violent, and I was still serving warrants and kicking in doors. Now, hindsight, I say, life's a breach. But while I was kicking in doors and serving warrants, I wasn't wearing a bulletproof vest. And obviously, I'm here, so I felt God had a different plan for me. But hindsight, I was in my 20s, I realized if we could go, okay. If we could uh, figure the tripod and give it away. But I it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. All right, here we go. Here we go. Back to what I was saying. This is going to be a good interview. <laughs> I realize that, let me just explain to you how what, what happens when you breach a door. Intel says, two alpha five, we got two suspects in the house with a gun. And you're like, okay, cool. I was a little crazy at the time, so I suggested I can go into two people. Like, I'm good. I have enough skill set in my mind. I thought I did. So I kick in the door, right, a little off, as my sister would say. Without, without a vest, so it means basically you wanted to die. Basically, that's kind of what that boils okay. down to. Okay, all right. Yes, yes. I didn't, I didn't want anybody around because I didn't want anybody to see me be taken out. I just wanted to be taken out. Huh. But when you kick in the door and Intel says there's two people, a lot of times what happens is there's two or three more people. So that's Oops. five. Well, when you kick in a door, you don't have the luxury of saying, you know what, guys, 
I thought there was only two of you. Obviously, there's five. I'll be right back. That's Let me get somebody. <laughs> yes, a couple people. More <laughs> artillery. Like, that's not an option. So if I can make it through that, right, then there's so many other areas in life that we kick in a door and things don't go our way. But that doesn't mean we retreat. It doesn't mean that we stop. It doesn't mean that we have to ask what a great metaphor. for help or reinforcements. Right. Right. We always think something doesn't go our, our, our way. We have to go seek counsel or we have to go do all of these things. And there's nothing wrong with seeking well, counsel. But and typically, though, the fear makes people retreat. It does. So, so it's a great analogy. Hold on. Go ahead. It's, it's okay. You can obviously see we're not in the best spot here. <laughs> So that's a great metaphor, right? For, mm -hmm. for that's what happens is that most people they do, they, they get afraid of what's next, what they see when they open the door. It's a quickly shut that door. Right. So hopefully they didn't see me, right? And right. I can and I can retreat. Right. But obviously that wasn't an people option for you. you right. You right. Them and, open. and the truth is it's it's really not a viable option for us either it, in any situation. You well, I shouldn't say that. One of the things <laughs> one of my business coaches said to me, he he asked, because I was about to drop a bunch of coin on some marketing and he said what can you do on your own what more can you do i ask myself at the end of every business mm. day i'm self-employed and i work from home most of the time what can i do next what can i do next so before i go to bed is there a blog i can write is there a video that i can do for social media specific right. to my niche right what more can we do and when so many people and i was almost there pay people to do things that you're really not that busy. If you cut away the fat, right. you've already kicked in the door. Engage. Right. You have the tools. We've been through too much in life to not be able to deal with the little things that are on our desks. Absolutely. And I find if you stay in motion, right, you're not right. retreating, but you're staying in motion, you're going to get the feedback you need Yes. so that you can pivot where you need to pivot, Definitely. right? But what happens is, is you've got to take that next step. You've got to right. stay in motion. Exactly. So when you get overwhelmed, do you ever get overwhelmed? Of course. <laughs> So when you get overwhelmed, let's say, and, and I can imagine you're probably a big goal seeker, right? Yes. Because I, I just can tell that yes. about you. We have something in common. <laughs> Driven. So when you've got that big goal and you feel overwhelmed, what do you fall back on? I will go skateboarding. I will go play soccer with my son. I will um, play Nerf guns wars in the house with my son. If my son's at school, my wife's at work, and it's the middle of the day and I'm overwhelmed, I'll go for a run. I'll go to the gym. For me... When so I, it's to clear your head? Is that is what it is? Totally it's to just to do something change your pattern? It's to pivot, right? Right, pivot. Pivot. Yeah. Do, just do something change, else. Yeah. Well, really what you're doing is you're, you're breaking that when you're in an emotional cycle. Right. But we need to break that. Otherwise, we just continue it and it mm -hmm. just gets bigger and the story like engulfs us, right? Like right. as if we were like in a, uh, in a, putting ourselves in a bag. It, it happens. Right. Or I'll watch a comedy. I will literally go from my office and go to a different part of the house and I'll go to Netflix and I'll turn on a 20 minute comedy skit, watch it, get refreshed, and then I'll go back. And then you go back. Yeah, laughter cures a lot of things. Absolutely, I love laughter. Um, so, you know, one of the things that, that I talk to people when they're overwhelmed, so mm -hmm. uh, is to just help them to get perspective. Right. Like that's one way that you get perspective. Mm -hmm. And the other way that I do is like you said, a simple question is I tell them to ask that question that we're talking about today, which is what's next, is if you just, even though you've got many steps that you want to get to, if you just focus on what's next, then it seems so manageable. It is. Right? It is. It's so much smaller. And if it's too big, then break it down into the very next step. Right? And then it enables you. And that very next step might be to clear your head, break your pattern. And then after you come back is to ask yourself, well, what's the very next step? Right. And so very that true. way that keeps us in motion. One of the things that, that worked for me, for some reason, we're taught to think three to five year plan. Uh, one of the things that works for me, and, and, and not to be morbid, but I don't do a three to five year plan. I've seen so much death in my life. Mm. I might not be here three to five years, but I'm pretty certain I'll be here for the next three to five hours. Right. So when I get up in the morning, if I get up at four o'clock in the morning, um, and I do not set my alarm for that, my body's just weird. Right. But if I'm up <laughs> at four, okay, Dom, what can I do for three hours? I can get up. That sometimes is a task, right? <laughs> I'm up. Now I can go to some oatmeal, then I can go to the gym and take a shower. Well, that's three hours. If, if I... You do all that in three hours? Yes. Oh, because oh, yes. you got the gym in there, I right? Because the oatmeal right, doesn't right, take right. that no, long. No, 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 no. That's a big bowl of oatmeal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but in three hours, I can do... Like, to me, that's a win. 
I've already set a goal for the next three hours. I've done all four things, getting right. up, right. eating, working out, right. and showering, getting ready for my next three hours. And in my mind, and this works for everybody, once you win, your endorphins are up. Oh, yeah. You're like, I'm a winner. Dopamine, hello. You, right. It's just like, what'd you do to win? I don't know. I ate oatmeal and I showered. Right. Like, but it's still a win because you right. had a goal for that. Totally. You completed it. Absolutely. So I do three to five hour plans for my day. Right. Well, that's awesome. Three to five hour plans. Right. I mean, you know, I do this little game with people in, in some of my workshops that I do is just to help people see what it's like when they don't set a plan for themselves, right. when they come in in the morning mm -hmm. and you don't, you don't know what's next, then you kind of flounder and you right. waste a lot of time. You do waste a lot of time. But when you're clear what you're going to do, right? If you know that those mm -hmm. are the three things that you're going to do, like I know some people when they get up, they know that they're going to have their hour of power and they know that right. they, they're going to journal and they're going to meditate and, you know, and they know mm -hmm. what it is, they get it done. Exactly. And they feel good. So that's what I want to. That's why we're on the topic of what's next. Is I want you guys to think about uh, as you're planning your day, as you're planning your week. Right? There's different levels of planning. I also am not a big three to five year planner because everything's different. You know. Everything changes. You know, our industries change. Yes. The environment is changing. But you do need to plan. And because planning sets us up for success, that's a, and, that's and that a better way of putting that the energy, the environment, not death. I just I skipped a whole bunch of things. <laughs> that's to, okay. I death happens dead. too. Right. <laughs> death happens too. Well, you never know. You know, I've had people in my life that suddenly right. you know passed, and it does um, it does create a new sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. So let's you know. Actually, I, I like to think about it like that. The okay. way bring it back is that. Create that sense of urgency right. in yourself to, to plan and be purposeful about um, what you're doing and be clear on what's next. Very true. Very true. Is there anything else that you want to share with, uh, with the audience about that theme, about yourself? Uh, and then tell us what's going on with you, what you're looking forward to. Um, specific to the audience, have fun. Don't, don't, and, don't and sweat it's the small easy stuff. to say don't take life serious. And I was just sharing with you, as a police officer or in the military, you're, you're, you witness a lot of things. And more than once I've stood over a man as he's breathed his last breath. And to see somebody have agony and, and regret and sorrow in their eyes as they have seconds left, mm. like I, I not, never wanted, wanted to be that, that, that person. So I make sure to have fun. I no make sure to, I, I haven't always liked everybody in my family, but I found a way to find something about them. Well, that now they know. I, I like, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> they do know. Right? Now they know. <laughs> right. But, but even prior to this, like just right. for forgiveness. So what I'm working on now is just celebrating my first year in, in entrepreneurship, having a great time. And uh, one of the things I learned from you, as I've never met you before, but um, I was sharing with you kind of why I'm here. And I found that I was comparing my journey, my path to what maybe a Tony Robbins would do or a John Maxwell, but I'm Dom Fawcett. Like yeah. my path is my path. The reason they're successful is because they carved their own path. Was well, it gonna be easy? So I've car I'm carving my own path and coming to the realization that I am Dom Fawcett and that's okay. Awesome, awesome. So and and my pleasure. I mean, compared to what is a really important thing that we need to compare ourselves to where we are now mm -hmm. and be the best version of ourselves and not true. try to be someone else because yes. they're in a different place and, like you said, a different path. Right. So you said that beautifully, and I hope that that's a point that you're all going to take with you as you decide what's next. It's not what's next for someone else. It's what's next for you. And uh, thank you, Dom, for being thank here. You. It's I been great having that. you here. Likewise. All right. Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. My name is Penny Zanker, and this is Take Back Time. We'll see you in the next episode. Have a good day. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Good timing.